Millions of years ago, when the earth was still young, there was no such thing as the soil. Then very slowly, over a long period of time, frost, wind and rain broke up the rock, beginning the process of soil formation. Questi sono già frammenti, vedi? Ancora la struttura di roccia che ha perso la cementazione, quindi è piuttosto friabile. Just as there are many different types of rocks, plants and animals in nature, there are also many different types of soils. They differ in terms of origin, color, depth and fertility, and vary from place to place. Soil is the product of the fragmentation of rocks brought about by climatic events, geomorphologic processes, the passage of time and vegetation. Man's actions, too, can greatly influence soil formation. Soil, which covers the top layer of the Earth's surface, supports plant life, as well as that of animals and humans. It is therefore one of mankind's most precious resources. The soil comprises mineral matter made up of granules of silt, clay and sand, in addition to organic matter that comes from the decomposition of animals and plant organisms. It also has empty spaces, cracks and pores, which can be filled with air or water. Soil science dates back to when man first began to farm the land. The ancient Egyptians actually differentiated the more fertile black soils from the less fertile red ones for tax purposes. Soil science, which is also called pedology, investigates how a particular soil comes to be, how it evolves through time and the changing seasons, and its distribution in a given area. It's a relatively young science which began in the mid-19th century with Russian-born Dokuchayev. Soil science requires the scientist to take into account not just the environment, but a whole range of environmental factors that influence and form the soil. This means drawing on the knowledge of many other disciplines, including geology, climatology and botany. The study of the soil is carried out through field trials. One of the principal methods used is the study of an excavation also known as a soil profile. This can be as much as a meter and a half deep or down to bedrock or underground water. The profile is a natural cross-section of soil which allows the soil scientist to observe the differences between the various strata. These strata which are more or less parallel to the Earth's surface, are called soil horizons. The characteristics of each horizon are recorded. The content of sand, silt and clay, the presence of pebbles, the size and distribution of pores, the free lime content and the pH. 
The profile allows the soil scientist to observe the growth pattern of roots and to highlight any water drainage problems. The pedologist defines the characteristics of the soil according to specific manuals and records them on charts to be used in subsequent phases of the study. In this profile, we can clearly see the dark coloured ploughed surface horizon and the lighter coloured rock below. The dark colour can be attributed to the organic matter that has accumulated over the years from the roots of plants, leaves, fungi, earthworms and bacteria. One of the first things to do when investigating the soil is to make a borehole. This is a quick and straightforward study method, although it doesn't allow us to observe all the characteristics, like pores and roots, which are visible with a soil profile. Surveys carried out by means of boreholes help soil scientists identify zones which have the same soil type, thereby delineating boundaries. This information is then used to draw up soil maps. Ten percent hydrochloric acid reveals the presence of calcium carbonate or free lime by producing effervescence. A high lime content can have a negative impact on the growth of some plants, causing nutritional problems and consequent yellowing of the leaves. <laughs> 